This is going to be different, as you can probably tell. But rather than talking about one display or comparing two displays, I am going to talk about BenQ Entire Pro Display lineup and compare them for you in this video. This will give you a better idea about the features that are specific to each of a line and what you may be gaining as you move up in the Pro Display lineup. Because our lives as creative professionals are becoming multifaceted nowadays, this guide is going to help you choose the right display that best fits into your workflow. I'm Art BenQ Ambassador. Let's go. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. So to start us out, let me give you some background about the lineup and the type of creative professional they're really designed for. Starting with the SW, it is really designed for photographers and professional photography workflow. It is a hardware calibrated display line through and through that is made by BenQ. And what they have really sought to do when they released the SW line is to create a hardware calibrated display line that is priced valuably in the market. Because before BenQ came into the market, the hardware display line is really mostly a duopoly between two companies and the prices for those displays are not cheap. They're really expensive and difficult to get into, where most of us are relegated to using a software calibrated display with probably 8-bit plus FRC. BenQ have come in and changed that, so now they have added the function of hardware calibration to the entire display lineup and brought the price points down so much that many of us can afford to have multiple of these displays in our professional working environment. And that's something that I'm really appreciative of because once BenQ have entered the market, other companies have started to follow suit too. As you probably see nowadays, there's probably more than about two handfuls of professional display companies that are making hardware calibrated display. Next up, it's a lineup that was alive for some time between the SW lineup and that is the PV line. The PV line stands for Pro Video and this monitor line is a hardware calibrated display also, but it's really designed specifically for pro video workflow with a lot of features that are really geared towards video professionals and video editors. There are certain features in the PV line that are merging into the SW line because the PV line has been discontinued, but we'll talk about that later in this video. And lastly, we have the PD line, which stands for Pro Design. This is really creative for designers, CAD CAM works, animators, any type of work that you do that does not require necessarily the hardware calibration, such as pro video work or pro photography work, this is the display that is really designed and created specifically for this group of professionals. One thing to note about this display is that it does not have hardware calibration, unlike the other two siblings in the pro lineup. Don't get me wrong though, the panel of this display is still really good. So now that we have laid down some groundwork and talked about these pro display lineup and who they are designed for, let's talk about the models that I have behind me because these are the models that I feel represents the top of the line or the flagship for that line. Starting with the SW, this is the SW321C. It is the flagship 32 inch 4K hardware calibrated display. It has a few great features in this model specifically has a USB Type-C with 60 watt power delivery, a second generation hotkey puck, but it also has features that are industry first. For instance, the new matte coating on the display that barely reflects any light. I mean, this looks like a matted print right now, what I'm viewing. The other thing too is has a new color mode called Paper Color Sync that is designed to change the display white point to match that close to a printed image. This will save you a lot of time in proofing and also cost in reprinting and getting everything to look correctly. These are photographic centric features. However, it also has features that are designed specifically for pro video workflow too. Like many of the recently released SW display, it also has support for HDR10, but BenQ have gone one step further and added support for HLG, hybrid log gamma to this display. So if you want to do high dynamic range content mastering, well, this is going to be the one for you. The other thing that it can also do is that it supports native refresh rate other than 60 Hertz. For instance, you can go in and set the refresh rate to 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60 Hertz. The advantage of this is you'll be able to play back your content in its native cadence without any pull down or anything of that nature. So this is really a display line that's slowly merging in pro photo and pro video workflow. And this will segue me into talking about the next display. This is the PV270. 
The reason why I'm choosing this display to showcase the PV line is because for the longest time, this is known as the gold standard for BenQ Pro hardware calibrated display. The panel inside here is considered to be one of the best. Sadly though, the PV line has been discontinued and depending on where you are, you may be able to still get one new or one refurbished from BenQ. But if you can't and you want this amazing panel, I would recommend that you look at the SW270C, which is using the exact same panel that's inside this PV display. However, it has upgraded design and upgraded electronics. It is a much better display all around than the PV270, and it also has modern connectivity. But what makes the PV line really unique in general, and this model really unique, is the support for, again, different refresh rates. So this one has a support for a native refresh rate of 72 hertz, and it will allow you to play back your 24p content at its native cadence. Again, something that's being supported on the SW line. And lastly, we're gonna move into the PD. This is the PD3220U. It is the latest in the PD lineup and it has an amazing sleek Infinity Edge design. It has a new stand. It has a hockey puck Gen 2. This display is really created more for designers, for CAD CAM work, for animators, and it's really, and aesthetically is designed to match that closely of an Apple portable device, such as your MacBook Pro. If I put a MacBook Pro here, you will think that this is designed specifically to go with it. It has a lot of color modes in here, as I mentioned before, that are really designer centric. For example, the cap cam mode. You can set the gamut dual on this display so that it will split in half. In one half, you can have CAD CAM color mode that will enhance wire framing. And the other half, you can set it to sRGB so you can see the rendering in full color right away. So depending on the type of work that you do, this is gonna be more of the display for you compared to the other two. The other thing too, for instance, it has an animation color mode that allows you to go in and change the brightness of the shadow area by so many different steps. This way you can animate the shadow areas a lot better with this display. So again, different workflows in general that are designed for each of the lines. And this is why choosing the correct one that will fit best in your workflow is going to be important. Another notable thing about this display too is that it has Thunderbolt 3 with daisy chaining. So you can hook this display up and if you want to get another SW, you can always use this display as a primary, link it to your laptop with USB Type-C and daisy chain this one to your SW321C and it can handle 4K resolution just fine. It will also provide power delivery to your laptop and it provides a higher power delivery rating than the SW line because again, this is designed with a different philosophy in mind has USB Type-C connection on the side, and also it has speakers. They're smaller speakers, but I mean, if you want to get the job done and you want to get some sound coming from your system, they're decent enough to get you through on that one. So again, like I said, these are pro display lineup, and these are the models that I choose to represent each of a line. Now let's go in and dig in further and talk about the features. The overall panel quality of BenQ Pro Display lineup are going to be very similar to each other. That means BenQ choose the best panels to go into these display lineup, and all of them are IPS LED backlit, so they're going to have an amazing angle view. But now let's really talk about the differences between them. I am going to group the SW and the PV together because both of these are hardware calibrated display. What that means is that there is a computer and a ship on the display, and on that ship there is a 3D lookup table, or what we call a 3D LUT. Depending on the models that you get, some of them will have a 14-bit 3D LUT, and the newer models will have a 16-bit 3D LUT. To calibrate this display, you would use BenQ software. For the SW, you would use Palette Master Element, and the benefit of Palette Master Element is that it can do a hardware calibration really fast. It has support for a variety of devices from both X-Rite and Data Color. So this means any of your X-Rite device will work and also any of your Spider device will work. There are certain support devices. I have made a video about that. I will put a link in the description below. However, Palette Master Element is also known to be, I would say, feature light right now, meaning that there are certain settings you can't really go in and set it up. And there are some bugs in the software, but BenQ is genuinely working through and trying to fix those bugs as fast as possible. And they're also looking forward to adding more features in Palette Master Element in the future too. Moving on to the PV line, the PV line uses a software with a very similar name called Palette Master. So Palette Master Element for the SBU, Palette Master for the PV. 
Palette Master is a software that BenQ have co-developed with X-Rite to calibrate these display lineup. And the software is really a full-fledged calibration software. It has a lot of granular controls that you can go in and dial. It's really fantastic for that. But the one thing that I found out in testing is that Palette Master takes about three to five times as long to calibrate this display compared to Palette Master Elements. So there are certain give and takes with the software. And the other thing too is that Palette Master is locked into X-Rite devices only. So those are just some things to think about when you're choosing this display or when you're thinking about these calibration software. One more thing that I want to mention about calibration software is that the PV lineup and along with the two recent release BenQ SW, the SW270C and this one, the 321C, BenQ have also opened up the 3D LUT to third party software. That means you can use a third party software such as Calman to do a true hardware calibration on this display. So if you don't want to use BenQ software, you don't have to in these recent release models. In the other models, you would still have to rely on either Palette Master or Palette Master Element. Moving on to the PD line. This is a software calibrated display only. And for this, you will be using the software that comes with your calibration devices. For X-Rite, you'll be either using the i1 Profiler or the i1 Studio. And for Data Color Spider, you'll be using the Spider software to run the calibration here. Particularly for this model, the PD3220U, BenQ have calibrated Display P3 color mode and sRGB for greater uniformity. My recommendation is to run the calibration in that color mode, and it's going to look fantastic for what you need to do. Next up, let's talk about the Delta E for the display lineup. Delta E describes the variation between the reference color and what the display can show. Anytime you can get a display with a Delta E below 5 is considered good. Anytime you can push that Delta E further down to below 2 is considered to be a fantastic display. So for the entire SW lineup, BenQ have guaranteed when it's calibrated from the factory, it will have a Delta E of less than 2. And many times when you run the calibration using Palette Master Element, you will be able to achieve a value very similar to that as well. This display also comes with its own calibration report card from the factory, all of them. And it's a really granular report card that tells you a lot of details about the display, the uniformity, how the toners are tracking and everything. And for the PV line, BenQ have pushed the Delta E value down to 1.5, which is a very stringent requirement. The thing is this, between 0.5 Delta E of anything below 2, will you see the difference? Most of the time, you're not going to see a difference at all. So I wouldn't even worry too much. If you have to look at the SW today, you're going to be fine. These are great, fantastic display for pro workflow. And moving on to the PD line, BenQ have guaranteed that this lineup will have a Delta E value of less than 3. And again, all of these display, because they're part of the pro lineup, will come with their own calibration report card, with the SW report card being a lot more granular and showing a lot more detail report compared to the PD display. Again, different lineup, different stringent, different requirements. And because we're talking so much about color, let's now talk about color gamut representation. In the SW and PV line, the color gamut representation are going to be very similar, meaning that it's guaranteed to have 99% Adobe RGB. The Display P3 is going to range between 93 to 97% depending on the model, and again, very similar to Display P3 as well. But both of them would be able to do 100% sRGB and 100% Rec. 709. So if you need to calibrate in those color spaces, this display will do fantastically well for those. And for the PD line, depending on the model and the lineup, it varies quite a bit. For this one, or the more recent release PD displays, it can show 96% DCI-P3 and it has a coverage for 100% sRGB and 100% Rec. 709. So depending on which one you want to get in the PD lineup, I would double check and make sure that you're looking at the right model before you do purchase them. And I know that some of the PD display line also has support for 99% Adobe RGB too. Next up, let's talk about color mode. So many of these are going to ship with the color mode that you're familiar with. sRGB, Rec. 709, Adobe RGB, Display P3, and DCI-P3, for instance. Some of them, such as the SW321C, are going to have color mode that are specifically for this model only, such as Paper Color Sync. And like many of the recent release SW display, it also has a new color mode called MBook. MBook is really designed to match that of any Apple computer with a built-in display, such as your MacBook, MacBook Pro, or iMac. Provided that those displays are uncalibrated, if you set your display to MBook color mode and you plug those displays in, the color, what you see here, 
should match really closely with what you see on the Apple display. That's also a mode that is available in the PD3220U and the more recent release PD display as well. As I mentioned before, the PD will have color modes specifically to it that the other two would not have, such as CAD cam and animation color mode. In fact, PD also has a low blue light color mode and dark room color mode too that you can go in and choose when you're doing the different type of workflow that you may be using with this display. And because we're talking about color, there's one more aspect we need to talk about and that is bit depth. The SW and the PV line displays are considered a 10-bit display and they are done via an 8-bit plus FRC. This means that the majority of the color information is being handled over the 8-bit signal with the extra 2-bit done by frame rate control. Essentially, some of the pixels are flickering at different frequencies in order to make us believe that we are seeing a 10-bit equivalent photo. And in the SW line, there is one model that has been discontinued that is a true 10-bit panel, that is the SW320. And amazingly enough, for I would say 99% of the workflow and the work that I do, I use SW321C alongside with my SW320 and I can't really tell the difference between the two, a true 10-bit versus an 8-bit plus FRC. Here's the case, if your workflow needs a true 10-bit panel, there are some out there, however, they would cost two or three times as much. And if your workflow definitely mirrors that, then those are the displays that you want to consider. For me, I will be honest with you that my entire life I have been editing on displays that are 8-bit plus FRC and they have been fine. I'm still able to produce good and great color images. I'm producing a great videos that I'm doing on YouTube right now. So, I mean, it really comes down to what you really need. And in those situations, I mean, one case that I found is that if you work in a high-end retouching house where you're constantly zooming in 500 and 600% and you need to know exactly what that pixel's color is when you zoom in that much, then definitely you need a you know 10-bit display. But when you're working in that environment, a 10-bit display doesn't cost that much to you. But for us, for me, a 10-bit display is just out of my price range. Moving on to the PD line. The PD line, majority of them are going to be, again, 10-bit done via an 8-bit plus FRC. There are smaller and the older previous generation PD displays, and these are not like released in the past, I would probably see two or three years. There are the older models in that. Some of them are gonna be 8-bit. So if you're looking at the really older PDs, I would definitely double check before you get them. But otherwise, you're gonna get an equivalent picture of what you see all behind me here, which is an 10-bit Dunvine 8-bit plus FRC, and it's going to be perfectly fine. Next up is the certification. So BenQ, when they made the display, they have partnered up and sent the display out to various lab and various certification group to get their display tested. So the SW and the PV line display, they're both CalMAN verified and Pantone validated. This means that they meet the stringent requirement of Pantone and CalMAN for the calibration and to be used as a color critical device within those specific industry and workflow. Some of the models, for example, in the SW line, the older ones, and also the PV270 are also technically certified, where the newer models are not technically certified anymore. And the reason why is not because they didn't pass it, but it's more so technically just stop certifying displays. And now to the PD line. All of them are going to be Phantone validated with exception of two models that are not CalMAN verified, but otherwise they're all CalMAN verified. So you'll be good if you even need to use this to do any critical video production work. Now let's talk about design and ergonomics, starting with the PD line. If you have the more recent release PD models, the design is going to be really sleek. It's going to look amazing. It will come with the hotkey puck gen two, and it is infinity edge all the way around. This is not true though, for all the PD models, there are certain PD models that still has the bezel around it. So I would check out the design before you purchase the PD model. But if you're looking at any of the more recent one, the ergonomics and design of this one is really just fantastic. Moving on to the PV display lineup, the PV display, if you really think about it, it looks dated nowadays to have like a bezel around the display, but the design of this one is really contemporary of the time and it fits in when this model was released. And moving on to the SW line, depending on the model that you get, if you want a sleeker one, the model that comes to mind is the 24 inch SW240, the 27 inch 4K SW271, and the 27 inch 2K SW270C. All those displays are gonna have infinity edge on three sides of the display with a small bezel on the bottom. 
The first SW display, the SW2700PT, the design is contemporary of the time, so you will have the bezel going around it. And for this one, the SW321C, I think BenQ would really want to have a display that has an Infinity Edge on this one. However, to get this coating and this panel made specifically, there is no manufacturers that will make this type of panel along with this coating combination and everything in an Infinity Edge. I mean, if they could, they probably would because it looks better. But you know what? This also works really well too. And talking about this, I want to bring something back to the SW quickly. And the reason why BenQ shows to go all gray out in this one is to minimize any reflection whatsoever so that when you're working on your images or when you're working on your video or any creative project that you may be working on, you're immersive in that project. This is something very different in the PD line, and especially in more recent release PD line where you have a lot more of the silver, the shiny metal. It's again designed for a different creative workflow. And that's just something that you have to factor in, in your decision choosing the display and the one that you want to work with too. One more thing about the SW line is that all of them come with a hotkey puck. Beside the SW240, instead of a hotkey puck, it has a button on the screen that you can use to quickly switch between different color modes. The PV line doesn't have any hotkey puck, and as I mentioned, the more recent release PD line also has the hotkey puck as well. And we are almost done with this pro display lineup comparison. I want to touch on a few more things regarding the SW and the PV that the more recent release SW, such as the SW321C here, is starting to merge in some of the features that was available in the PV line display in. So that if you're a pro photographer, this would definitely be the lineup for you. If you are doing pro video work, this is also going to be the display lineup to consider moving on forward, at least at this point in time. And then there's also the PD line display, which again, is really designer oriented. However, if you ever dabble into photos, into videos, this display will work for you as well. One of the things that I also want to touch on is high dynamic range. In the SW line, again, like the more recent release models, they have support for HDR10, and this one added support for HLG, hybrid log gamma. The PV line, because of the time when the display was released, there is really no HDR. It was just in its inception at that point. And also on the PD line, this also has support for HDR10. And I think that any of the newer PD line coming out will also have support for HDR going forward. Again, this HDR10 is really designed more for content consumption. You can probably try to use it to do some HDR content mastering, but I would probably say it's really more for content consumption at this point. And that opens another can of worms where there's not a lot of HDR content available on computer side of things yet. And I totally understand, but I'm just sharing you the information that I know so far about these HDR and how they generally work. So I hope that you find this BenQ Pro Display line of comparison helpful, entertaining, and useful in choosing the best display line that will fit into your workflow. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like. Subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified when I upload amazing contents like this, and until next time, art is right. Added support for HLG, high log gamma, hybrid log gamma.